All right, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us here at the sanctuary and for watching at home. Uh, we're excited to have you join us tonight for an evening of storytelling, to hear a few stories from the past and some ideas for the future of our work in Lower Price Hill. Uh, this year marks the 50th year anniversary of the Lower Price Hill Community School, which is now Education Matters and Community Matters. And we want to celebrate with some stories that just kind of showcase our community, our community of Lower Price Hill and also of students and the thousands of folks who have walked through our doors over the years. So uh, we're going to hear from three storytellers tonight and enjoy just a glimpse into the lives of the Community Matters and Education Matters family. So our first storyteller is Jim Holmstrom. Uh, Jim became a part of the Lower Price Hill community 44 years ago when he started working at Santa Maria Community Services. Uh, he's now semi-retired, still engaged in the work, and has led, uh, for 42 years, he led the youth program at Santa Maria. If there is such a thing as a Lower Price Hill celebrity, Jim is it. Every person knows Jim, every family has worked with Jim. Um, you can walk, it takes you about an hour just to get down one street in Lower Price Hill because everyone will stop and talk to Jim. So we're excited and honored to have him here tonight. He's gonna share a story that captures kind of the spirit of the community in the early days uh, when the Lower Price Hill Community School was founded. This uh, neighborhood is such a unique place, and we talk about that all the time, and Jim's gonna share a little bit that just kind of captures that sense of community and family that we have here. So please join me in welcoming Jim. Thank you, thank you, it's really nice to be here. I feel like I'm home again. Here, so um, the story that I wanted to to um, relay uh, it's about something that happened at a neighborhood festival a number of years ago. I think 16 or 17 years ago. Uh, this neighborhood, uh, with its Appalachian roots, would have a small festival in this community every year the week preceding the big Appalachian Festival, which is now out at Old Coney. At the time, I think, it, well, when it started, it was down at the convention center. Um, but it was real important to this neighborhood to continue that festival. And until the pandemic, it had happened for 42 years. Um, and I think they will probably resurrect that again when this pandemic is finally really over. Um, so, but I, the, the story has to do with, with a, a woman and her father, um, and I checked with her, I told her I wanted to tell this story, I wanted to make sure that it was okay. I got her blessing, in fact she was pleased to hear that I was going to tell this story because you'll see, what, I think what, what happened, she's as proud of this community as I was. But the woman is Donna Jones, and she and I were on the planning committee of this Lower Price Hill Appalachian Festival. Most, more years than not, we were on the planning committee and I usually helped to establish the music lineup and she would take care of the food. So she would, and this, this happened in the, the bingo hall, the old bingo hall, the Opportunity Hub now, I guess, right, right over here. Um, that's where the festival happened most years. Um, so she would prepare beans and cornbread and they'd have hot dogs or not necessarily an Appalachian dish, but um, so she did that most years. And so this year, whenever, I, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but like I said, it's 16 or 17 years ago, we, as we were planning this festival, which happened in May, um, she had communicated to the rest of the planning committee that her father was not in good shape. He had a number of health issues. And she was hoping 
that she wouldn't have to miss the festival. So, so the festival begins several hours into the festival. She gets a call from the hospital that the family should get up there as quickly as possible. Her father had taken a turn for the worse. So, so she left and someone else you know, took her place down there preparing the food, serving the food. Um, and a couple of hours later, I don't remember who it was that got the call at the festival, but it was from Donna calling from the hospital. And um, she said, yeah, my, my father is, he's dying. He's not gonna be here much longer. But he had a request. He asked if people at the festival would sing to him. So there were probably a hundred people at the festival. Everyone got up, formed a circle, and joined hands. He, the song he wanted to hear was Will the Circle Be Unbroken? So everyone, adults, children, got together, held hands, sang the song to him. Donna told me later that he passed that evening, but when he heard the song, he got very calm and peaceful. Apparently he had been agitated before that and he wound up passing like four or five hours after we did this. I, I, I felt so proud of this community. And that was, that was at a time in a year when it seemed, seemingly, if the news was down in this neighborhood, it was for something negative. It was never, there were lots of good things going on in the neighborhood, but there, there either wasn't an interest or they, they, they just, they weren't here for those positive stories. And I thought, where, where, are the new, where are the news cameras? They should do a documentary about this. There were other things that happened around that same time. I always felt proud of the people in this neighborhood, but that was a time when there were a lot of things going on that, that this just really showed, it showed the heart and the soul of people in this community. So that's the story that I wanted to share. Do you know, do you remember the song? How, was, how it goes? What, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Yeah. Sing a little bit. Now this I wasn't ready for. <laughs> I kn that Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better Home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. You take the second. Oh, I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Thank you, so, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, it really, I think that story does such a great job at, at just capturing Something that's difficult to explain about Lower Price Hill, um, you know, it's just this moment where people will come together and you can just feel it. Um, you know, we have our struggles, we have our battles, but there are all these beautiful moments where we come together. And uh, I remember when you first told me, that, told me that story, I got chills and because I have had my own experiences like that here in the neighborhood and it was really special. So thank you so much. You're awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> Our next storyteller tonight is Jayla Norit. Uh, Jayla has been a part of our community for many years uh, when she started volunteering with us when she was still in college at Xavier. Uh, she is a total rock star on so many levels and serves in a lot of different roles, currently on the board of Community Matters, and she's a senior innovation designer at the Council on Aging and an amazing local campaign manager and all around just awesome lady. So please join me in welcoming Jayla up. 
to share. Hi. Wow, that was touching. I can't believe. Wow, that's a great story. Where do I begin? Oh, wow, this room is a great beginning to both my career as what I do now and see at Council on Aging, which is innovation and thinking big and scaling things at small spaces. Uh, to, to when I first started, when I was thinking big alongside Mary and trying to scale big things in small sizes so that the people outside of this community at the bend in the river could understand the craziness that we were coming up with and give us some money so that it would work. And thanks to all of you who are uh, with us live for you know believing in that dream that happened over there uh, all those years ago. Uh, when I started, uh, this was called Lower Price Hill Community Schools, and there was a hole in the back of the sanctuary, and we weren't allowed in here um, because of that hole. And it's changed so much, and it's become so rich, just like those ideas uh, that we were stuffed in an attic trying to figure out. Uh, there's nothing like spending your summer with washing machines and learning so much about washing machines and how they work. And you should get an industrial one because it lasts longer. <laughs> That's my plug. <laughs> if you're looking for a washing machine, get an industrial one. That is what I learned um, from that summer. But what I also learned was it doesn't matter if you take things apart or put things together. If you've got a reason behind what you do and you have a person to tie it to, anything can be achieved. Um, when we started with the washing well project, which didn't have a name at that point, it was just, we're going to do a nonprofit washing machine thing. And it's like, why are we doing that? <laughs> what, who came up with this? Why are we doing this? And it uh, came back to uh, someone in the community who came and said, you know, I, I can't get up the hill to do my laundry, and this is just breaking me. She was washing her clothes in her bathtub um, and hanging them out to dry. And that only works for like 2.5 months in Cincinnati adequately. <laughs> um, otherwise, your clothes freeze or they blow away or they're just rained on and then they're ruined and then you're buying more clothes. And this is a low income neighborhood. You don't have that type of money. You don't have that type of time. And in our Exploration, that was the tie that we kept in the back of our mind, even though we didn't have a name and we didn't know how it was going to work. And we had a terrible time convincing people for a very long time that this was a great idea that they should support. And then we did. And then we created something beautiful that still works and still two blocks over. And we we're creating jobs and we we're creating a space in that community and we don't have to hear those stories anymore because we've empowered the community in that. We are still trying to convince people that our little ideas are worthwhile. And we're still trying to use the stories of the people that live here in Lower Price Hill and that they matter and that their time matters and that they are a valuable resource in the city of Cincinnati. And we've, we're, we're going to keep fighting. Uh, we're going to keep trying to convince people that this little spot next to the bend in the river is worthwhile, is you know something worth investing in. Because once you do, you get beautiful spaces like this room with its stained glass and its nice mint green and its nice smell. And it's a space that our community here in Lower Price Hill can call home. It's a place that I consider part of my home. There are a lot of people walking around Cincinnati with tattoos of Lower Price Hill because they consider this place home. And when you listen to people, you can make it home. And that's the spark, the beauty of Community Matters, at least. Um, I would say that's the same spark that Education Matters has. 
We've seen a lot of people come through these doors to learn and grow and understand uh, what it's like to live in the United States, to pass that darn citizenship test that's ridiculous. So many hard questions that I can't even answer. Um, learning about how our money works and how our systems work, things that day-to-day -day people across Cincinnati, they don't think about. Education Matters takes the time to think about those things and help people integrate into this community and into our society and give them a leg up um, and give them a fresh start with the GED program and our graduates every year. If you haven't come to one of those events, you absolutely should. It's so much fun. And it's a short graduation. It's not like those weird college ones that are like four hours long and you don't get cake. Um, those aren't no good. <laughs> at least you get cake at these. Um, and it's delicious. Uh, so I, I guess that's, that's kind of how we, we got here um, today. We started with an idea, started with a story, and we let that small story take over our little corner, our little bend in the river. Thank you. Thank you, Jayla. So our uh, final storyteller tonight is Alicia Hildebrand. Alicia is an all around amazing human being. I was trying to come up with words to describe Alicia and I like had too many um, awesome adjectives. So I had to just land on phenomenal human being. Uh, Alicia is an organizer and leader within the community. Uh, she leads the Artists Collective, our community gardens. You can always find her out and about um, planting trees, digging in the dirt, those sort of things. And also is an amazingly talented artist and we'll be sure to put a link to her art that is available as well. So. Uh, please join me in welcoming Alicia. Okay, I'm not as cool as Jim, so I got I got some notes here. Um, but like, wow, like time is so weird, y'all. Like, what is it even? And how can I talk about the future if it hasn't even happened yet? Um, lucky for you, <clears throat> I've recently discovered that time is actually a circle, not a line, and that really everything is happening all at once, but our brains cannot access all of the cool stuff in there, so we can't perceive it all, and so here we are. And that is as far down the rabbit hole we'll go today. <laughs> um, but for real, though, I do think about time a lot and I'm still really bad at managing it. Uh, but I think I do have a bit of an excuse, and that is I'm always thinking about what comes next, how to make that thing we just did way cooler next year, <clears throat> how to sustain momentum moving forward, and how to transform programs as they evolve. Uh, so it makes sense that my bread and butter is resident leadership which at its core is putting power in the hands where it belongs in the hands of lower price hill neighbors. Um, it might be hard for some of us in this room to imagine, but developers like make really big decisions for entire neighborhoods without asking them. Um, like, oh, do you want a giant soccer stadium around the block? No, we think you'll change your mind. Oh, you don't want a bunch of bars and restaurants you can't afford to patronize to displace your lifelong neighbors? Well, we think you'll change your mind once all the buildings are painted in cute colors and we have hanging flower boxes. Like, what? That's not, that's not how it's supposed to be done. Um, and just know that this could have very well been the fate of Lower Price Hill. Um, and to this day, we still have to deal with rich bullies hating on affordable housing. 
Um, also know that it did not and it will not happen here because the neighbors of Lower Price Hill are a family unit and just like Jim just explained, they have a history of coming together and solving incredibly complex challenges. Uh, for me, what comes next in Lower Price Hill walks hand in hand with my favorite place in the neighborhood, Sassafras Garden. Uh, just take a moment to think about what it means to plant a seed. The very act is a moment of hope that something more beautiful will exist there. A moment of activism because we have the power to create alternatives. And ultimately, a moment intending to the future because we expect growth and transformation to be the outcome. It's such a small yet overwhelmingly powerful thing to witness. Olivia Bray has been a gardener at Sassafras since day one. So over six years ago, she began as a Girl Scout, planting garden sorrel, harvesting service berries, sowing cucumber seeds, building raised beds. And this summer she turned 14 and was finally able to be a garden apprentice because of you know child labor laws and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> because she felt like sassafras was already hers and she had been tending to that space for so many years of her childhood, Olivia like totally rocked it out like all day. And uh, so much so that she came back after her apprenticeship was over to check on her little seedlings and, and tomato plants and bring the family along to harvest all the cool stuff she did. Uh, like my heart like literally could explode right now. Uh, just thinking about how powerful she felt having 100% ownership and stewardship over that space that she had been tending to for so many years. I also told her she should take my job one day and manage the gardens. We're still working on that one. Please don't fire me. I love working in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> but I am convinced that Olivia is the future of Lower Price Hill. Thanks to COVID, we've been hosting neighborhood action teams in the garden this year so we can socially distance outside. And um, as most of you know, the neighborhood action team is the group that rallied to the cause of Lower Price Hill thrives when um, the, which is our affordable housing project, it was under attack. Um, so we all got together, showed up at City Hall, never backed down, demanded accountability, and until we were seen and heard. And here we are a year later with construction underway. Nat continues to be a powerhouse in the neighborhood with an ever-present gaze on the future. My newest best friend and savior of the pawpaw trees, Jethro Jones, has been attending uh, the neighborhood action team meetings for most of the time that they've been happening. Uh, he's participated in countless meetings in topics ranging from climate change to designing a new bike repair program to organizing community cleanups, helping get the grocery store up and running, um, and just calling me when people are about to saw down a bunch of trees in the garden, which I greatly appreciate. Um, he is the perfect example of how shifting the power dynamic in LPH will pave the way to truly sustainable community development. While challenges need to be addressed, the key is lifting up what is already golden and pure. Our gold is the people of Lower Price Hill, Jethro, Marisha, Miss Nicey, all the Niceys, the Brays, even the little troublemaker ones, <laughs> Tamika, Rick Ingram, Miss Nancy, Lisa Miles, just all of them are absolute treasures that 100% deserve to be living in a thriving community. Jethro and community matters alike understand that when institutions and nonprofits hoard all of the power and make all of the decisions, the community is pushed out and down, also known as gentrification. 
<clears throat> he and others on the neighborhood action team see that as an institution, we are different. We are actively fighting to strip away the powers that be and the structural forces holding families and individuals back. We instead want to build up power with it within each one of our neighbors, especially if that means taking the power away from us as an institution. Um, and we are 100% moving toward thriving community. We have 47, in the future we'll have 47 new apartment units, single, seven single family homes, St. Michael Street at 100% occupancy for the first time in generations, 60 new trees in just the next year, uh, the transformation of vacant lots into orchards, the opening of a community art studio called Outer Space, the opening of a new vibrant grocery store, uh, Misers, and so many picnics, so many grill outs, and so many street closures so that we can party. <laughs> Respectfully, of course. <clears throat> um, and it seems like we have a lot of planning to do, y'all. So. <laughs> Um, I cannot understate how moved I am by working alongside the people of Lower Price Hill. And anyone who's experienced this place can tell you the same. We are really onto something here. Like, can't y'all feel that? <laughs> um, we are on our way to the fruition of our dreams, creating a more just and vibrant community. And we did it the right way. We're on the verge of showing the powers that be that gentrification is not the end all be all of community development and everyone can have a seat at the table. We're about to prove that affordable housing does not in fact further concentrate poverty. We will be a model for compassionate, sustainable people power change. LPH is a one of a kind place where the future is very much intertwined with power. The resiliency that exists within the family unit that is Lower Price Hill has been demonstrated time and time again. Because we had to fight like hell to get to where we are today, the future is ours to determine, and that is true power. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Alicia. We get one more uh, round of applause for Jim, Jayla, and Alicia. You sure you don't want to sing? You don't, you don't want to okay. Sing. <laughs> well, uh, so as you heard tonight, we have uh, so many, I mean, we, it was hard for us to choose just a few, a handful of stories to share. And don't worry, we'll have other opportunities to share more stories. Um, but we wanted to just capture sort of some of the spirit of the work that we do in um, Education Matters and Community Matters. And that spirit really is at its core all about people and the power that is within each person. And our work is really to just see that, recognize it, invest in it, and allow it to grow. And that really is the beauty of, of everything that we do. So thank you again for joining us tonight and for joining us from your homes. Hope you enjoyed the pizza, if you got to pick up a pizza packet. And our ask for you, of you, is that you are a part of our community. And in order to keep our work moving forward, in order to sustain the impact and the vision of the future of our work, uh, we need your support. Uh, we need folks to uh, volunteer. We need folks to donate time, energy, and money. And we have a link available that will show up on your screen. Uh, if you go to cmcincy.org slash ungala, uh, you'll be able to see the opportunities to give there. And we just ask that you consider, consider the stories that you heard tonight and how you want to be a part of our community and help us continue to grow. 
And a big special thanks to all of our supporters and sponsors that helped make this unique event possible. Uh, we couldn't have done it without your support as well. So with that, I'm really appreciative that everyone joined us tonight, and I wish you a great evening. Thank you. <laughs>